The Google Pixel 7 Pro is essentially a better Pixel 6 Pro, but that's actually a good thing. Hello everyone, this is Matt from Real World Review, and I think that the Pixel 7 Pro is definitely confusing, but still very good. Socials are listed above, so now we can talk about the Pixel 7 Pro. Following what Samsung and Apple did this year, and probably will do in 2023, the Pixel 7 Pro is almost the same as the Pixel 6 Pro. The 5G ultra-wideband antenna on the top took this oval shape like the iPhone and Samsung devices do, as well as making the cameras not only stand out more, but be truly surrounded by metal. A shiny and somewhat imperfect shaped metal, but either way, not the glass and plastic hybrid from the 6 series. Continuing with that theme, the back features the same Gorilla Glass Victus from the Pixel 6 Pro, but now has the same color on the top and bottom, something I felt was a downside to the lack of customization, and still technically is. There's a camera oval with a circle around the ultra-wide sensor, which bothers me for some reason, and then a camera circle for the telephoto sensor. Then we get the spectral and flicker sensor, a microphone, and the flashlight. It does feel kind of weird calling it a camera flash when I never really use it for that. There's also a laser autofocusing unit hidden in this section. On the left side of the phone, we get the SIM tray, while the top features the ultra-wideband antenna that we talked about, as well as another microphone. The right side is where the power and volume buttons are, which is so pixel that it's not really surprising. Then the bottom is where a loudspeaker is, as well as the microphone grill and the USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port, which means 10 gigabits per second transfer speeds, up from that 5 gigabits that were found in the Pixel 6 Pro. This also allows for 23 watts of wired and wireless charging, while reverse wireless charging does exist and is definitely lower than that, and most of the time turns on automatically when you plug your device into the charger. But all of this is the same as a Pixel 6 Pro. Moving to the screen, we get the same 6.7 inch curved 1440p OLED display with a pixel density of 512 pixels per inch and 120 hertz for the refresh rate. Like the 6 Pro and the back glass, it is covered by Gorilla Glass Victus, so try not to drop this phone. It is 25% brighter when you have it outside, but it is also a little bit brighter when you are using it inside, something that I did notice. But again, all of this is the same except for the brightness on the Pixel 6 Pro. For some reason, the Pixel 7 Pro is slightly shorter and thinner width-wise, but the same thickness as before. Kind of. Google really needs help with their sizing charts, because something's off here. The Pixel 7 Pro is technically heavier, but at 212 grams, it sits at a 2 gram weight difference. If you haven't realized by now, the Pixel 7 Pro is pretty much the same as the Pixel 6 Pro, and that's going to be the theme of this video. Moving inside, we get the same somewhat confusing pieces of phone as before. Like I said, the screen is the same, but brighter, just like the fingerprint scanner, just not the brightness part. It's pretty much the same fingerprint scanner. I did forget to mention that the earpiece does pair with the bottom speaker, allowing for a stereo feel that is neither better or worse than the Pixel 6 Pro. I mean, this is my video, I guess I could have talked about that earlier. Anyways, we finally get to the processor, which is actually different. Kind of. It's a Google Tensor G2 chip, and in my test, it's literally a 6% spec boost and almost a 50% GPU decrease. Sure, they are just benchmarking apps, and real-world usage shows very slight performance increases across the board, with very slight being a generous way to put it. Still, not the best, but definitely not the worst performance, with most of the increases to the processor being on background processing and machine learning, which is definitely something that helps when you take pictures and videos. As for the RAM, we get the same 12GB being LPDDR5, with the option of 128, 256, or 512 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage. The battery is slightly different, again with that slight being generous, for that 21mA bump or 3mA decrease, depending on how you look at it. I literally can't make this stuff up. Of course, that's when dealing with minimal and typical measurements, so technically a 3mA decrease to 5000, but not a big deal because it's still not really a good battery. Getting through the day is easy to do, but definitely getting through two days is a little bit difficult to do. It would be commendable if the processor was more efficient, but it just isn't. Even the connectivity is kind of strange, with the non-ultra-wideband version having more 5G band, while the ultra-wide version actually loses some sub-6 bands to make the cell connectivity the same as the Pixel 6 Pro. Same with the Wi-Fi, with Wi-Fi 6E support, but so does the Pixel 6 Pro. 
You even get the same IP68 dust and water resistance with the same five years of software support starting with Android 13. With this said, the end of support for the 6 Pro is October 2026, while the 7 Pro is October 2027 for security updates, while major updates are two years earlier for both. With all these similarities and refinements, it actually means that the 7 Pro is the phone that you should actually buy, almost. Now the biggest difference has to be in the cameras. The main camera is pretty much the same, being a 50 megapixel f1.5 aperture camera with optical image stabilization. But the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera is slightly different. This has a wider field of view and now focuses, meaning macro photography and video is now something that you can do on the Pixel 7 or 7 Pro. With that said, I'm not really a fan of how it looks, and especially with the macro, being not the best in low light situations. Then we have the 48 megapixel telephoto sensor that goes to an optical 5x zoom and is still stabilized. Now because there's a large range from 1x to 5x, they added a 2x that crops into that 50 megapixel sensor and gives you four optical shooting styles, with the 0.6x going to 0.5x after an update, I guess. Kind of weird. Either way, when the camera switches, it is a little bit strange, but you do get crisp shots from all of those sensors, even if you're not trying to. It is slightly better than the 6 series, but not by much, and those are probably the words that you were looking for. The video aspect is pretty similar. You can now record 4K 60 frames per second on all of the cameras and even toggle through them when you are recording video. The former even applies to the front camera. It is a smaller megapixel count technically at 10.5 megapixels, but it does allow for nice images and more importantly, face unlock. It's still a fixed focus sensor, but that hasn't prevented Google from doing good things with it, though I do wish that it would focus. Lastly, there's a bunch of software features like real tone, face unblur, and now photo unblur. With all of them being something that should be able to happen on pretty much every modern phone nowadays, and especially the last one because it doesn't really need to process in real time. I would take longer wait times over not having a feature at all. To be fair, I haven't tried any of the unblurring so I can't really promote whether it's a good or bad thing, but the cinematic blur is really bad and only at 1080p. And Honestly, I don't even know why Google thought that this was a good idea to include this. It just looks horrible. To me, the camera is just a camera, with what the 6 series had, but better. And let's be honest, if you like something about the camera set that only the Pixel has, my opinion is not going to sway you into buying something. Because if you think that having the Google version of the Magic Eraser is better than using tools on your computer or with a third party app, then you're going to pick this phone regardless of what I say. Which is a decent segue, not the scooter, into why you should actually pick up the phone in the first place. For one, the Pro is a pretty big phone, and honestly, I hate how Google says that you have to get a Pro phone and a very large phone to have a telephoto sensor, while Apple and Samsung allow you to choose a phone that's actually Pixel 6a size to get that telephoto sensor. But there is something annoying but also perfect about looking, feeling, and essentially being a Pixel 6 Pro, but better. For one, the Pixel 5 doesn't look anything like this, or even the Pixel 6 series. So if you like the Pixel 6 design, then you're in luck because there is no major overhaul in this shape and look. And even better, no price jump. So if you wanted the Pixel 6 Pro and just waited too long, then the similar Pixel 7 Pro is here and not outdated just yet. With that said, the Pixel 6 series prices in the used market are falling pretty hard. So those might be a better option if screen brightness 4x to 5x zooming with macro support and improved AI and machine learning aren't really something that you care about. And honestly, that took a while for me to figure out what the differences are because the Pixel 7 Pro just got small upgrades, just like what Samsung and Apple did. At the end of the day, most phones are slight upgrades and refinements over the last model, but as time goes on, this becomes more and more obvious. The Pixel 5 to Pixel 6 was a dramatic jump, while the Pixel 7 makes you kind of want more. Like I said, if you wanted the Pixel 6 Pro and you just never got one, the Pixel 7 Pro is still an awesome phone. But if you're coming from a Pixel 6 Pro, just keep that one. A 5x zoom is cool over the 4x that you're getting on the Pixel 6 Pro, but just like the macro, it's not needed. And that's my review of the Pixel 7 Pro, the slightly better good Pixel. But what do you think? Is this better than the OnePlus 7 Pro? Let me know what you think, and as always, thanks for watching.